Yes. All are set. A very good evening to one and all. I welcome all the participants and today's guest speaker, Mr. Anil Vagde, sir, in this Ambedkar Intellectual Summit 2014. I am Dr. Vishakha Kolambikar from Maharashtra. And the topic allotted to Mr. Vagde is Baba Sahib Ambedkar Technology and Anti-Struggle Movement in USA. So before start of the session, uh, I would like to I will request uh, Suyash Gautam to give the short introduction of Mr. Vagdi. Okay. Yes, Suyash, please. With what's the thing? with over three decades of uh, corporate expertise, spanning prominent uh, organization like DRDO, Infosys, Am I audible actually? I want to question that. Yeah, Suresh, you may want to. Not clear. You may want to turn off your video to huh? reduce the overload on the internet. Okay. That may help. With over three corporate expertise, spanning prominent organizations like DRDO, Infosys. Cap Gemini, uh, Mr. Anil Vagri, sir, is with professional background in computer science engineering and MBA from the prestigious Indian Institute of Management, Kolkata, uh, having spent significant time in the United States. He is actively involved in advocacy work through Ambedkar International Center, campaigning social justice costs such as Cisco caste discrimination case and undergoing uh, battle for preservation rights at IIM Ahmedabad. Uh, Anil sir is also deeply engaged in legislative efforts collaborating with multiple figures like Shama Savan who advanced collective ordinance in Seattle Council and California SB 403. Currently, he leads the coalition of uh, America against caste discrimination, uniting over 20 civil rights organizations in the U.S. Am I audible? Swish, you are not that much clear. Yes, have you finished the introduction? Yes, Swish, can you hear me? Yes, I did that part. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Suresh. Uh, so to know more about Mr. Vagde, sir, uh, sir, I request you to proceed the sessions now. Thank you, sir. Please proceed the session, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vishakha. Thank you, Suresh, for the introduction. Uh, thank you for inviting me for this talk. Uh, I... I would like this uh, talk to be a lot more interactive. So the way we were thinking was um, probably half an hour of uh, talk and half an hour of question answers because many a times I feel the question answers bring a very salient as aspects that I wouldn't talk about while while talking what what I'm going to talk. So with that, uh, my talk is going to be broadly around 
the caste struggles, the, the at caste advocacy work that is happening in the U.S. Uh, also talking about how do we survive in the corporate uh, sector, what we should do. I will just share my some of the personal um, kind of anecdotes, you may say, or some of the things that help surviving the private sector. Uh, I will also talk about uh, opportunities in the U.S. Uh, hopefully that benefits. I will also talk about kind of a, kind of a militant Buddhism that uh, I come across and just wanted to broach some of the subjects, some of the discussions around that topic. So bro broadly, those four topics is what I want to kind of, uh, talk about. Coming to caste struggles in the in the U.S., uh, I am uh, Ambedkar International Center's uh, spokesperson. Uh, currently based in Atlanta. Otherwise, I'm from Nagpur. Uh, all my working life, uh, I'm in uh, Bangalore. All my working life, I'm in Bangalore. I started my career with uh, Defense Research and Development Organization, and some of it, Suyesh has already you know, talked about. Couple of years ago, uh, uh, when in 2020, when Cisco caste discrimination case came to the limelight, uh, Ambedkar International Center decided to file an amicus brief after Hindu American Foundation filed an amicus brief in the case, saying this case is uh, denigrating Hinduism. And only after the Hindu American Foundation kind of stepped in, Ambedkar International Center thought some of the activists, uh, as an organization, we thought that it's time for us to stand up to some of these bullies in the American uh, scene. Like uh, uh, one of the author had said that whenever, wherever Hindus travel, the Buddhism or the, the, the caste will travel. And uh, that we are seeing already in the, in the U.S., so we filed a amicus brief stating casteism is real, caste discrimination is real. It is of course very much violent in in in, in India, but it has made its uh, entry in the U.S. social strata, social system as well. The idea is not to denigrate Hinduism, but to just bring the fact that the castes exist and casteism exists. You cannot deny that the caste doesn't exist. Religion being a protected category, uh, we couldn't have gone after Hinduism. And the intent wasn't so much of going after Hinduism. At the same time, we did point out that the caste originated in, in Hinduism. The caste is sanctified by Hinduism. The Shastras, the Upanishadas, the stories, the Puranas, the Ramayana, Mahabharata, Gita, uh, Everywhere, everywhere you can see the caste. Uh, there is, there is no denial there. That kind of uh, sanctity, sanctity is not provided by other religion. Although now caste has entered other religions also, especially in 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 India or in South Asia. That was the basic premise of our uh, amicus brief. We held a press conference, and it was widely carried out. So that was our first kind of um, foray into the caste struggles in the in the us we kept the issue alive by talking to press reporters and and other people uh, we have been trying to kind of talk wherever possible to enlighten or uh, to explain how the caste operates uh, what does affirmative action mean and some of those talks and we were also working very closely with the coalition of seattle indian americans uh, it's a seattle based group shama savant is the was the city councillor in in seattle and in the U.S., when the caste is getting uh, uh, notified as a, a protected category in, in the universities, etc., there was a talk of passing such a similar resolution in Seattle uh, City Council. Now, declaring that the caste is protected category, instead of, instead of that, uh, Kshama Savant and others felt it better to pass a law. And we worked with uh, Kshama Savant's Socialist Alternative Group the Coalition of Seattle Indian Americans uh, and many other similar like-minded organizations uh, and successfully canvassed in the in Seattle City Council and the caste, uh, the anti-caste, the caste discrimination law was passed in Seattle. It's more than a year. It was last year, February 24th. 
subsequently uh, sb403 as we call it the bill number uh, senate bill 403 was brought in by aisha wahab senator aisha wahab in california california is a large state and uh, that was brought in it passed in the senate uh, it passed in the assembly but unfortunately the the money bags prevailed and uh, and they are very proud of uh, having going to support the governor newsom the california governor and the governor newsom vetoed the bill that that was the unfortunate turn of events but at the same time the caste has kind of taken a prominence it still continues to be talked about various universities are passing those uh, anti caste discrimination bills not notifying and things like that so that's a that's a very very brief about uh, caste discrimination we have had when we were inviting people to talk about caste their experiences uh, to with the reporters when reporters went and wrote about those things in cisco case uh, in the light of cisco case so there are very many examples there in the pipeline people are being asked their caste in the interview itself what is your caste it is that latent uh, people given the indians mentality they they are very much interested in finding out your your caste and therefore then they decide whether you are uh, you are going to be their friends or not uh, they want to check by touching your left shoulder whether you are wearing a thread they they will ask you why are you eating non veg or i didn't see you in the temple this this weekend these are the these are the examples of trying to find out what your caste uh, coordinates are and therefore they can then claim the superiority over you or or whatever many of the indian uh, our people tend to tend to stay away where the companies are dominated by by indians they want to go to the companies where indians are fewer uh, because the caste discrimination is becoming very very prominent people are very proudly talking about oh i belong to the uh, brahmin caste or oh, i we don't eat non veg and and that kind of superiority that they that they, they talk about so caste has arrived in the us uh, with the bang it is continue to stay and our struggles to make sure that the caste is protected uh, the discrimination is outlawed and those activities uh, those act that activism will kind of continue i'll i'll kind of move to uh, corporate sector surviving in the corporate sector like uh, suyesh mentioned i have worked in infosys for 14 years i was i was working as a scientist in defense research and development organization that was my first job uh lot of good work the caste was known given the government sector everybody knows your caste before even before you join a uh, lot of struggles you go as a scst member on on a promotion board and you find that they are not adhering to some of those norms and then you tend to fight uh, when you fight that the people who are supposed who are supposed to be uh, recruited or promoted uh, given the caste quota etc they are not getting their due and you even at the cost of your career etc you have to step in i did uh, step in fighting with the system making sure our people are getting their due after that i, I did my mba from i am calcutta and uh, thereafter my private sector journey started so private sector uh, ideally they are not supposed to know your caste uh, especially if you are out of your state it is even more difficult for people to find your caste unless of course uh, there are some friends and relatives and things things of that nature or people from your state are there some names like wagde probably is not such a very common name uh, but kamle gajbi meshram uh, those kind of names are very very caste indicative and some people will know but when you are in place like bangalore probably a lot of people non non maharashtrian people will not be able to find caste so that's the i'm not trying to kind of say that let us run away or etc etc from our identities and so on at the same time people in nagpur especially and people in maharashtra if you go out of your place there are enormous benefits that that are there so first of all uh, your caste is kind of goes in the background you also tend to get a lot of good exposure by moving to cities like bangalore nagpur um, or places there are not much opportunities there are not much uh, no, no good jobs 
so it is better to move when i say i keep saying nagpur of course it's a tier 2 tier 3 kind of city so it's better to move to places where there are opportunities like bangalore uh, mumbai uh, delhi ncr and and the places where the opportunities are opportunities galore um, you are in a better company people are kind of trying to do better and go to foreign go to different private companies go for higher packages and so on all of that that competition for so to say makes you better your english language gets much much better when you are out of your your own way and some of those things are very very important uh, the background that we come from the poor economical background that we come from sometimes we do not have a good dress sense please do not take some of these things as a negativity or something like that these are i am a shield caste myself and i am trying to kind of uh, say a few things these are my personal experiences please please don't take it you know i am trying to say that we do not have a, dre- a dressing sense that's not what i am saying i am saying look at the people who wear better clothes look at the people how they conduct themselves look at the people how they have the so to say ice breakers when when they are conversing uh, very very important things to uh, oh well, people are always of course clean shaven um, their uh, hairs uh, they have a regular haircuts uh, once a month uh, clean shaven every day they they go some of you may have beards and you may of course uh, it's your choice it's your prerogative uh, but having a good dressing sense a good watch with a leather strap a good belt uh, good shoes polished every day uh, conducting yourself and talking about ice breakers see it's there are some people who will say oh I, maybe it's our background again that we do not get exposed to say cricket and so on but knowing about cricket knowing about what is happening it is a very good ice breaker to kind of mingle with the friends talk about cricket otherwise they are talking about cricket and you will not be able to talk about cricket not restricted to cricket itself we can we should read newspapers uh, read economic times read times of india so that you are aware of latest politics latest social issues how the market is be- behaving how the how the economy is kind of progressing these are very good ways to break into the group and we of course need to you know have our of course a sense of humor etc etc helps uh, so making sure that you kind of you fit in is is really 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 important uh, there is no need to kind of fight on everything and anything if there are um, debates getting on about reservation and affirmative action and whatever it need not be you don't have to probably defend especially early on later on as the friendships grow you can kind of make those subtle there is no point लाइक इन हिंदी कहावत है कि पानी में रह के मगर मच से बाहर नहीं कर सकते आई एम अगेन नॉट ट्राइंग टू से दैट वी शुड शाय अवे बट देर इज नो पॉइंट व्हाट आर वी गोइंग टू डू बाय बाय काइंड ऑफ इट्स द लॉ ऑफ द लैंड रिजर्वेशन इज गोइंग टू बी देयर जस्ट बाय हैविंग अ डिबेट ट्राइंग टू डिफीट अ गाय एट द लंच टेबल ऑल यू आर गोइंग टू मेक इज एन एनिमी और ए रिवील योर कास्ट फॉर फॉर नो रीजन स्पेशली व्हेन देयर आर नो बेनिफिट why why to get into some of these uh, spots unnecessarily especially early uh, earlier early on in uh, in your career so uh, avoid some of those debates at the same time be aware uh, of course before first and foremost of all that your domain knowledge your technology knowledge uh, has to be top class we have to do better than everybody else we have to do we have to be good doubly good than than rest of them because Uh, otherwise they are actually trying to kind of victimize you find out and of course some of those are uh, natural competition also but make sure that you know your technology you know you know your domain well spend those especially early years in building in honing those technical skills and keeping those skills up to date and taking care of other things like grooming dressing uh, aware of of uh, the the surroundings by way of sports uh, economy politics uh, social issues political issues uh, it is it is a good way to fit in um i'll quickly move on to the opportunities in the us so of course a lot of you are aware uh, that one of the ways to get into the us is by opting for a post graduation or a graduation even for that matter if you are able to afford but post graduation is a better way of uh, getting into the us uh, right gre there are education is a, is a business in in the us uh, it's all a lot of it is a private sector 
controlled uh, very few state colleges the way india in india also the similar thing is kind of happening now so if you are willing to pay uh, good fees they are always looking for students who will come from say china india and and other other places if you are able to write a gre and get a good score 320 3, 310 320 330 plus the admissions become easier and it's a sure shot way of uh, getting into the us job market after completing those two years there is something called a opt visa for three years that you get which allows you to work in in the us uh, there are loans available for especially for the stem courses science technology uh, engineering and mathematics those courses uh, will have uh, easily available uh, loans uh, in the us so even if you do not have money you can't fund it yourself uh, there are there are loans available in in the us just buy that admission later and uh, uh, so within uh, one year of working you will have enough savings to pay off the loan and uh, then savings you can kind of it's up to you whether you want to stay in the us or you want to come back to india even when you come back to india having a foreign degree having that foreign exposure helps you uh, getting ahead of the colleagues so that exposure also in in the us the cleanliness the way systems work because all we are open or exposed to is the indian uh, systems right um, long queues crowd everywhere but in, when you come to us you find so much systematic that you get into the dmv the department of motor vehicle what we call rto road transport or organization right office um, everything is systematic uh, you have to write the written test then you go for the driving test the instructor will sit with you you can't drive your way to get a license uh, he will test you for for driving exposure to some of these processes shows us the way that where we lag how can we do better as 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 a country uh, and that exposure that that confidence that you gain by staying in the us by exposing yourself to all of these good things is is enormous so so those there are other uh, other ways also if you have a experience uh, in in it especially if you have a computer science kind of degrees or you have a computer or you have it experience there is another thing called visa h1 visa the skill based visa h1b as it is called which your company can uh, apply for you or you have to find an employer who is willing to sponsor you for h1 sometimes it costs some, something like 3 to 4 lakhs uh, for uh, applying that and of course there is an enormous competition first goes through lottery because there are 10 times application around 60 to 80000 visas are issued every year and around 6 lakhs people kind of apply so there is a lottery which kind of uh, shortlist some Uh, two times people, so to say. If it is sixty thousand, then it's one lakh twenty thousand, and from there, then they check the qualifications, experience certificates, etc., and then they give you a visa. Then, so that's another way of coming to US. Of course, if your company has a US offices, company can do a company transfer, something called L one visa. That's a, another way of uh, getting into the US. Not easy. In, none of these things are going to be easy, but this happens, especially when. Uh, when the it sector started booming in uh, early 90s and uh, 2000s a lot of people used to go on h1 or l1 uh, i i came to us in in on l1 in 2000 early 2000 uh, and currently now i am on on h1 in the in the us so those those opportunities we should kind of look at see financial well being financial stability doing well is very very important uh, especially for the people who are who are like us from the so called lowered uh, caste so financial stability and then of course paying back to the society making sure that our friends relatives are also getting used to exposed to some of these things and and do well and we will do well all we are looking for is the is the kind of opportunities um, out there uh, some of this we just do not know like when i was uh, 83 when i took admission to nit alhava i had not written iit entrance i didn't know Uh, i didn't know uh, computer science is a better branch nobody at home knew that uh, i had read uh, uh, the previous years merit interview merit guys interview and he said he is kind of coming to mit in a computer science and computer science is the future only that thing i carried uh, in my head when i went for 
those uh, selection of branches. So again, um, going back to reading newspaper, getting inspired by people is, is also very important. So uh, all we need to know is how, how the world is moving, which technologies are moving better, uh, which technologies have better prospectors, prospects and, and things like that. So that is important. Um, I want to, so I have covered the opportunities, uh, survive corporate sector and uh, talked about caste struggle. I wanted to bring uh, another small important point, um, may not be received well again, but these are the community discussions that we need to have and understand where we are, what are some of the challenges. See, I am a Buddhist, many of you, especially from Maharashtra are Buddhist. We were lucky to have Dr. B. Ambedkar from our caste, from our region, from our language, to lead us to Buddhism. Baba Sahib took good amount of time to convert more than 20, 30 years to study all the religions and finally, and he had to do the awakening of the caste, right? Uh, wherein he explained to people saying that why getting out of Hinduism is important, uh, embracing Buddhism is, is a good uh, religion, uh, all of that. So, and Given the tall leader that he was from our your own caste, it was easy for us. We were lucky. Uh, we didn't double guess. We didn't really go and investigate which religion is better for us and therefore conversion. The people in other region, other states, uh, Baba Sahib has reached a little slowly. Of course, Baba Sahib has reached a little before even Buddha. And they are taking time to understand Buddhism it is not easy to convert from one religion to other because you grow up with a religion, you have those mumbo jumbo gods, goddesses and devis and devtas and whatnot, uh, those rituals, etc. It is not easy to kind of get rid of that in, in one shot. We are lucky that our previous generation in Maharashtra did that. Uh, I'm sure they must have struggled, but they did that. And today, our generation, my generation, is devoid of gods, devoid of rituals, devoid of that Jyotish and all that Thotand, right? Uh, so we are lucky, but the people who convert are the courageous ones. And it takes a lot of effort, lot of conviction to get rid of your earlier life, so to say, and, and convert to new, uh, newer religion. Also, one or family converting doesn't really accrue as a, as a benefit. When the mass movement kind of takes place, like 1956 uh, and in the entire Maharashtra, then there is the community has a, some kind of reason to celebrate and they want to kind of move forward now. They want to do something better, bigger. They are, they are inspired. And that inspiration then results in significant changes by way of people embracing education, people, of course, getting rid of all of these stupidities uh, uh, that, that hold us down, etc., trying to blame our past, karma and this and that, you come to know that it's all up to you what you want to do. And that belief, that inspiration propels the, the society forward. And those benefits have accrued to Maharashtrians with this uh, in an in a, in a enormous way. Today, uh, the, amongst the religious groups, barring Jains, Buddhists are the highest, Buddhists have the highest percentage of graduates. Buddhists have highest percentage of employed people. Uh, Buddhist women are highest in the uh, women's group, uh, religious women's religious. When you look at uh, Buddhist women, are highest employed uh, group. When you look at divorces, uh, the Buddhists are higher in the divorces. Now, one might say this is a negative thing. Uh, why divorces? I am talking about. See, rather than getting stuck in a marriage that doesn't work. Uh, coming out amicably, um, if it doesn't work, get out of it. So it's it's a, it's a, in that sense, it's a sign of progress rather than getting stuck in an unlivable marriage. I'm not trying to encourage that we should do that. As long as the marriage is workable, we should strive to make it work. But once it reaches some breaking point, uh, there is no harm, there is nothing wrong in, in getting out of the unlivable marriage. So in that sense, it's it's a very positive indicator. It shows that the women are financially stable, capable, uh, learned, graduated, educated, all, all of those things. All these benefits have accrued to Maharashtra and Buddhist. Now, 
this message of uh, converting to Buddhism needs to be spread. I am not a religious fanatic that, oh, please convert to Buddhism. It's going to give, take you to heaven. Obviously, there is no he heaven and hell concept the way we practice Buddhism. But it's not a panacea. You have to understand, uh, Understand first of all, getting rid of Hinduism is a lot more important than getting into Buddhism. Yeah, amongst the alternates that you need to get into Buddhism. But how do we convince the other regions of the benefits that that have accrued? How do we explain all of these, 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 these things that I'm trying to explain? Uh, the benefits are enormous, right? Uh, that inspiration, that eagerness to progress, eagerness to change uh, because of that conversion that comes in the entire society. How do we transfer that to say, Andhra, Telangana, Uttar Pradesh, Gujarat, other regions. Uh, some people have already left and become maybe Christians, which is which is fine. But we have to explain that. But when we try to explain that, sometimes many of the Buddhists come across as a very fanatic. Some of the people say, and this is the complaint that I get from the friends who are from the other regions, and they are a little miffed about, uh, about it. They, they say, if you are not a Buddhist, you are not an Ambedkar. This is a complete wrong way to frame it. Like I said, in Maharashtra, we went through a journey. We went through a tall leader. And it took us time to, to appreciate and, and, and convert. It's a journey. It doesn't happen in a day. In fact, if it happens in a day, you all those benefits will not even accrue. That churn has to happen. If we say Andhra, Andhra people or Telangana people or UP people or Gujarat or other regions, Odisha and, and all the states that we can talk about, say convert, it will not work. They have to go through this churning. They have to, we have to explain to them what does it mean, how does it help, uh, why should they, and in a very nice way, rather than trying to shame them, oh, if you are not a Buddhist, how can you call yourself an Ambedkar? A um, lot of people are also complaining that some of the Buddhism being practiced is also becoming very ritualistic. We need to strive that rituals, the dogmas do not come in. We keep saying that the Buddhism is a scientific way. Um, the, the rituals that sometimes monks tend to kind of carry on and on and on for hours, uh, are they really needed? Uh, are we replacing Hinduism rituals with with uh, Buddhism rituals, is that what we want to do? How do we keep it rational, scientific, logical? Uh, it is it is making sure that there is no dogma, making sure that there are, there are no rituals, making sure that we Buddhists are an ideal society and explain in, in a very empathetic way rather than trying to shame people is not going to convert people. People today name their, so to say, WhatsApp groups or their organizations as Dhamma organizations. The moment you keep your organization, your, your organization's name as a Dhamma organization, you are shunning others. You are not allowing them to come inside and benefiting from the wisdom that that Baba Sahib has left us and sharing that wisdom with, with others. You call it yourself Ambedkarites and let people come and slowly kind of explain to them the, the, the benefits as to why they should leave Hinduism and embrace uh, Buddhism. And beyond a point, it's up to them. If they do not want to, so be it. Some of them are Christians, some of them may be Muslims. What's the what's the wrong? Leaving Hinduism is much more important than than um, than becoming Buddhist. So that's that's the militant part of it. Uh, I have seen people are getting very very ritualistic. People are kind of taking pride in knowing all those uh, shlokas and and things like that. Uh, so try to keep it scientific, religious, rational, rather than uh, making it you know ritualistic and so on, and help others. To convert rather than uh, wow, if you are not Buddhist, you cannot be Ambedkar. Right? It just doesn't help. It actually distances. It actually kind of uh, pushes them away from us. So be sympathetic. Be empathetic. It's a very slow process. Uh, and maybe they will find a leader of their own. Um, let's say Kanchi Ramji had Kanchi Ramji converted, and all his rituals uh, after post uh, his uh, death. Uh, or for that matter, Mayavati's uh, nephew's uh, marriage, etc., etc., have happened within in the Buddhistic uh, rituals with the, with the Buddhistic uh, prayers and so on. So while they are not converted, they are still following. But if these leaders were to convert, then that will give a big impetus in those 
regions like we benefited from baba sahib maybe kanshiram ji had done it maybe mayavati can do it maybe rs pravin saab can do it in in andhra or, or telangana and and that those local leaders if they were to convert uh, that would be nice that will be inspirational and like i said individually few societies few households changing doesn't help as a society it should it should change i remember uh, some of the older people in my community i am from rambag in nagpur they used to say that they used to do this jadu tona and all of those right? literally those those things they said the day we converted we threw all that stuff in the in the rivers the gods gods goddesses photographs and that that uh, jadu tona ka whatever things that they used to have those uh, uh, diyas and jyotish and everything they just uh, threw it away and the entire society was energized i am repeating this point and then they they actually stop eating non veg for for couple of years there were people who will go and uh, check whether the in the marriages a uh, haldi is being applied the 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 turmeric is being applied to the bride and bridegroom and so on and they would stop that um, so there was a lot of awakening of of that kind that happened and that needs to happen so as a society we should try and change rather than individuals slowly it is it is a slow change so i will stop here i covered those those four aspects that i wanted to cover i hope i have not taken too much time but it will be it will be good to have question answers and i'll try to keep the questions brief so that we get more more time to discuss thank you yes uh, thank you very much sir uh, participants uh, may i request all the participants uh, if you have a questions uh, you can put it in the chat box or you can just unmute your mic and you can ask yes any questions from the participants hello i am audible yes yes so this is a very interesting talk and i got a very <clears throat> uh, what do you say i am working as a punjab university as a assistant professor in the field of life sciences biological sciences specifically in bioinformatics in north india me ye bade issue hai ki we have to maintain both of the things jo hindu ritual bhi maintain karna hai and then we have to maintain the buddhism and then inclination towards the prayer of डॉक्टर भीमराव अम्बेडकर तो ये जो स्विच होगा बिकॉज आई एम इन दू दैट कन्वर्सेशन नाउ फॉर द लास्ट मेनी इयर्स आई वॉन्ट टू बी बुद्धिस्ट द रिचुअल पार्ट विच दे फॉलो आई डोंट रिलेट टू दैट थिंग सो वेन यू से देन यू डोंट हैव टू बी बुद्धिस्ट टू फॉलो द अम्बेडिक राइट एंड देर रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन विच ही फॉलोज थ्रू आउट द लाइफ so it is okay to be not to be buddhist in that sense i feel incomplete in that sense mai khud to nahi feel karta par his people are making the particular circle if you are not a buddhist then you cannot be ambedkar rights incomplete ambedkar right what do you say in that sense yeah very 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 good question not that i will have answers to all of them everybody has a perspective but you could be a very good man or a woman for that matter you know uh, you are very rational logical scientific in temper but you haven't been exposed to buddhism now does that mean that uh, you are not a buddhist rational logical having a scientific temper not getting carried away in the rituals oh, or there will be oh if i do this or rather than doing certain things uh, because you have to reach heaven and not doing certain things because you don't want to go to hell rather than having all of those fears and you are uh, you are uh, behavior being dictated by those fears and and uh, some of those uh, benefits of going to heaven etc if it is self governed by your own logic by your own scientific temper uh, why not now if you think of uh, some of the advanced countries the the tendency towards being affiliated to a religion is reducing right uh, religion was see i am not a 
I'm not a uh, this thing in in this sense in the talking about religion etc etc. Please don't get uh, wrong, get me wrong. Uh, at the same time, religion was needed to govern human behavior at certain point in time because there was no fear of law etc. At one point in time, right? Now there is there is a fear of law. Uh, if you if you beat up somebody, you will go to jail, so to say, right? So there is there is law. Uh, so you don't need to kind of have a religion governing your your behavior, and sometimes those moral compass is your own, right? You think certain things are right, do and you do that. You see, you think certain things are wrong, you don't do that. Uh, that is much more important than having a label. Oh, I am a Buddhist from tomorrow. Oh, I am a good Christian from tomorrow. It is having your own moral compass is a lot more important than uh, taking the titles. That I am a Buddhist, I am this. Norway has, uh, I think, forty percent uh, non-religious uh, population. So that is that is where things are growing. But if you need, because you, you another problem that happens is if you are a Hindu, then you are a witch caste, right? So sometimes converting to Buddhism is important because then it is that is how you annihilate your caste. You have gotten rid of your caste. You don't have to bring, uh, say, uh, that uh, Brahman for your rituals. Right in Buddhism, as long as you know Panchashil, Trishar, and Panchashil, uh, anybody can conduct a ritual. Anybody can conduct a marriage. I can conduct a marriage if uh, I know that, and that is all that it takes. You don't need to have a bank. You don't need to know a lot of other 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 shlokas, etc. So some of that is also uh, kind of you know getting rid of some of those rituals. Need for Brahmin. Need for see our marriages in in Maharashtra. Uh, Buddhist mar marriages are decided by the availability of the hall rather than the panchang and the tithi and things like that. You can only get rid of that some of those fundamental changes by kind of shunning Hinduism if not embracing the Buddhism. Okay, so I, I will leave it at that because everybody has to kind of figure this out a little. I can only suggest and tell, and we can debate a little. Yeah, thanks. I, I hope. Thank it you helps. very much. Yeah, I got this really. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Nikhil. Hello. <clears throat> Hello. Am I audible to all? Yeah. Hello, sir. I am audible? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. I am Professor Dr. Devra Manohar from Kirti College, Bombay. Uh, sir, I am listening to your lecture. It is very good. No problem. Regarding to Buddhism, in Maharashtra also, Maharashtra Buddhist people also do not follow the principle told by the Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, sir, given by the Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar uh, regarding Buddhism principles. What to do, sir? How to do it? People do not follow principles of the Buddhism. What to do that purpose? It is my question. Yeah. How to make awareness in this community, Buddhist people? Yes, sir. So, yeah. No, so of course I, I don't know, man. So any any specific things that you want to tell, saying that they are not doing one, two, three, and just as an example. Uh, when you say Buddhist they are not following people, Buddhism, what Buddhist is the example? People, Buddhist people in Maharashtra also follows uh, that neglected Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar like Gauri Ganpati. I do not consider the God or any type of the God, but uh, somebody they can consider they follow this path also. This is the example in Buddhist people yeah. also. True. Now, of course, we, one can only explain to them saying, uh, you know, if you are a Buddhist and uh, if you have taken those 22 vows, uh, it's very clear that you will not follow some of that. There is a lot of societal pressure on some of the people uh, and uh, they kind of uh, fall prey to that. We so many a times we have not been able to replace some of those festivals of our own. We we try to tell kids not to celebrate Diwali, not to do this, not to do that. But then what are the alternates? So sometimes we'll have to also create some of these alternates, like going to Nagpur during Dashara Day, as that's a Tirthasthan that as as Baba Sahib said when he was not allowed to go Pandharpur and other places, he said we will have our own uh, places. Um, uh, on 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 31st December, you you go to Pune, uh, Bhima Koregao. Uh, on on December 6th, you go to Bombay, Dadar. So those those are also places. On on Dashara, you go to Nagpur, Diksha Bhumi. Means not that you have to go all the places all the time, 
and uh, you can't shame people you can only explain and try see even taking 22 vows itself uh, is very difficult for people who are not buddhist right because like i said uh, it took baba sahib some 30 years to formulate those 22 vows now somebody who is a practicing hindu and you tell them that oh let's start with 22 vows it's a huge huge step so sometimes the progress happens in a incremental steps it's a very slow it's a very very like baba sahib try to tell other uh, caste to have their own meetings and decide for themselves that whether they want to take buddhism or not around 1935 some of that mukti kon pathe that speech that baba sahib gave in 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 bombay right wherein he explains and that was the mahar parishad so to say the other caste didn't come along for whatever reasons uh, Maybe Baba Sahib should have said, oh, we all together as we will decide. But then the caste was so well entrenched that time, especially that time, that they said each caste has to have a parishad or a meeting and then they should decide. So many other uh, castes like Mang and uh, other castes didn't convert. What do we do? It is it is up to them. We cannot impose. Otherwise, we come, come across as a, di uh, a dictator and enforcer. Oh, no, it's a religion is a very private thing also, Dandar. I may want the entire world to be Buddhism. Does it mean that it will get rid of murderers, so to say? So let people kind of explore their, their journeys. Let, let people get convinced with certain religion or other. And then we can only show them, we can only tell them that this is the right thing. This is the scientific thing. This is a logical thing. This is a non-ritualistic thing. This is all thotand, so to say, all the hell and heaven and etc. We can only educate. We cannot force. So we need to strike that balance. What is education and what is uh, forcing? Forcing will repel people. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Correct, correct. It must require to awareness in society. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, Nikhil. Nikhil Mori, you have raised your hand, please. Yes, good evening, ma'am and sir. <laughs> Hello. Go ahead, go ahead, Nikhil. We can hear you. Yes, yeah. yes, you're uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, I have few questions regarding uh, Buddhism. Like in my family only, there are like, uh, I am the only person who never get involved in all that uh, other superstition things and all. But uh, my other family members, members are still into that only. And uh, they don't even listen to me. If I tell them a few things like, whatever you are doing is totally unscientific. Just read what Baba Sahib has told us. And what Buddhism uh, has uh, told us to not to do these things that all heaven, all uh, heaven, hell, and all that jyotish and all. But uh, even after convincing them so many times, they are not listening to me. So, uh, and I am the only person. Like uh, just like we said, that there is not a group of a group of a person that who can convince them and all. I'm the only person who is trying to convince them, but uh, it's like they are not listening to me. So in that case, how can I convince them? To uh, not to do all these things. Yeah, it is not easy. Like I said, the courageous are the ones, the, my previous generation, our previous generation who converted. And yeah. while they converted, yeah. let me also tell you that my mother used to do that Shukravara, Jai Santoshima, Upasa, yeah. etc. Right? Yeah. Uh, it is not easy. But having converted, Having kind of been talked about that because for them it is difficult. They were born and brought up with those rituals and gods and fear and heaven. Uh, but we got a good platform. Like you are an example, right? Your, your parents or your relatives yeah. are not doing it, but you are there already. Your kids will yeah. have that, that advantage of, you know, oh, there is nothing like Jyotish. There is nothing like uh, Rahu, Ketu, all, all that, all that yeah. good stuff. So let's not fret so much on the, on the past. Uh, it's very difficult for them to kind of get rid of that. You can point it out gently. Again, I must say that. You can point it out gently, give some uh, books to read, uh, but don't be harsh on them. It is, like I said, <laughs> yeah. it's a very courageous decision to change and they are trying their best is what I would think. So don't don't force, uh, expose them to some of those rational thoughts. Uh, that Andha Shraddha Nirmulan thing, the Dabhodkar's yeah. thing, is yeah, a great yeah, work. Uh, and this for few years. Yeah, it, it is a great work. Means the way the way they exposed Shakuntala Devi in a press conference in in Nagpur uh, was was phenomenal, phenomenal. Uh, 
uh, because it it is it is a falsehood. What they are trying to do is they are kind of fleecing the society by way of this. Uh, when sometimes yeah. Buddhist monks come and they demand they only want money and they don't want food and what not, uh, is that the right thing to do? Uh, is that correct? Yeah. So we need to question that as well at the same time when we are trying to be logical. It doesn't mean that Buddhist monks get a free pass. <laughs> right? Yeah. So it's a, it's a very slow process. Don't fret too much about it. You read yourself. Let them also read. They will be proud of you. Trust me. Yeah. Yeah. They will be proud of you. They will, they find it difficult to kind of get rid of some of those cobwebs in their head. But I'm telling you, they will be proud of it. You, that, that itself is a victory in some sense. You know, they want to be like you, but it is very difficult for them to kind of, and maybe slowly they will get there. It's, it's okay. Yeah. One more question, sir, I have. Uh, just a minute. Uh, like, uh, as I have read one book written by Yashwant Manohar, that uh, Baba Sahibani uh, Vipassana Ka Nakar. So, I have, it's a very small book. Uh, like, uh, just I wanted to clear a few points from your side there. Uh, uh, like, uh, Nikhil, sir, please, Mara, sir. take a short note, please. Sir. Nikhil, sir, other are in the queue yeah. and we have to end the session shortly. Yeah, yeah just a Be quick, sir. Uh, sir yeah, just a minute. Uh, just tell me, sir, that uh, is doing vipassana is a uh, good or a bad? Like, uh, if we are a Buddhist, we call ourselves okay. ourselves as yeah, a yeah. Buddhist. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not going to. I'm not. I will not be able to settle the debate. Right? The debate continues. Yeah. I myself have done the vipassana in 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 Igatpuri for ten days. It was a fantastic experience. That you know, you are trying not to crowd your brain with. Uh, other thoughts and things like that. You are trying to kind of yeah. focus on the present. All of that good stuff. I read some places that Baba Sahib also used to do meditation. So uh, sometimes yeah. some of these debates can continue. Ultimately, you have to do uh, what is right. It, does it help you? Of course. Is it unscientific? There, there are there are scientific evidences that people are able to be happy by being in the present. That is all that the meditation tells about. It's not a ritualistic practice, by the way. It is available to yeah. anybody and everybody. Uh, so being yeah, in a present yeah. gives you a good uh, feel about it because the anxieties come when we think about past. Oh, this should have happened, that should have happened. When we think of future, that's when the anxieties. But be in the present, do your stuff and hope for the better. That that That's what meditation is all about. I'm not again an expert in some of these things. So you don't have to take, I'm just trying to kind of give my perspective, my rationality. Yeah. Yes, okay. Priyanshi. Okay. Yes, Priyanshi, take your question. Only one question, please. All the participants, we are running out of time. Priyanshi, take yes, your question, sure, please. Yes, sir. Sure, I'm audible. Yeah. Yes, sir. So my question is about uh, similar as uh, Nikhil and Nikhil sir and Ashok sir have mentioned, like uh, in our in our society as a Buddhist in. in our Dalit community. Uh, again, there is a privileged class and uh, another one who are still uh, towards the development. To, uh, they are developing class, as we can say. So one day, uh, there is uh, who are financially stable and the another one who are uh, not that stable. Either. So, uh, like, uh, I have few friends who hesitate to quote Baba uh, Sahib speak or theaters or you know openly say about that as a big fan on other Buddhas. Why? Because maybe their boss the or some the of their office. Yes sir. Priyanshi, it's it's very difficult to hear what you said, so I'm really sorry. But if it is covered with Nikhil's and uh, Dr. Ashok's answers, uh, I think let us rest there. I know when I covered four topics, uh, I talked about religion towards the end and all our questions are only on the religion. What about opportunities in the US? What about the caste struggles in the US? What about how do we survive in the private sector? Uh, how do we fit in more? No, no questions on that. I think some of that, let us not focus so overtly on, on the religion. If, if there are questions on other topics as well, please. Yes, Priyanshi, uh, we are ending your question here. Uh, next, Nitin Zadho, please. Uh, be quick, sir. Yeah. Only one question is allowed. Sure. Sure. Uh, a beautiful session. And, uh, you know, my my question is precisely around the point that you just mentioned. Though religion is also part of that. And it may be, it may take 30 seconds to read it out. But but please, please do hear me. 
so so normally as as educated people around here uh, and, and you know some of us have been lucky thanks to to the efforts of dr baba saheb ambedkar that we could study and come to a level where we can speak this way and you know share our thoughts now a general alibi or probably an excuse that we new generation would take is to be you know accommodative and inclusive where there is a hard push of the religion of the largest population in the country uh, you know currently right and we all know what is advertised well gets sold well so that is something related to the religious matters where people have that issue where they cannot follow the general practices because something else is getting advertised right so that's when one issue that we largely see so in such an environment so one first question and, and there are few more but but i'll i'll keep it short and uh, i'll probably type it out in such an environment is there any structured way we could get the intellectuals together like this is one forum which is beautiful uh, but is there a structured way that we know where we can get the intellectuals together and have a structured flow to keep it simple because your thoughts were so beautiful right concise and simple be presentable be be educated be informed don't debate unnecessarily right stick to the point uh, and and you know just just do the bit of education and go out and see so is there a structured way and please allow me just a secondary question on that one way that comes to my mind is can our people go out like educate more go out to foreign countries earn more come back rich and then push the agenda so is there a moment to make it possible that our community people are you know given that kind of education or knowledge so that they can go out to the foreign countries not face the pressures that they have here on religious or other matters look at the environment there get educated and bring up the society you know by coming back to the country or from being there just the way you are doing so any thoughts around that sir yeah so i don't know whether i will be able to exactly answer it's a it's a mammoth uh, task uh, when the majoritarian push is so hard and especially in the indian context today uh, they talk about 400 plus seats and uh, they want they talk about bringing manusmriti they want to they talk about changing the constitution the constitution is there for protection of a minority rights right all said and done uh, otherwise constitution says the majority law and etc etc but it also provides a significant protection to the to the to the minor so those those political challenges where the country is headed uh, the universities are talking about jyotish as a, as a subject uh, all kinds of nonsense right so we i have no solution at the same time sometimes we want somebody else to come to form a big organization and everything will be set right i do not subscribe to that while that can happen uh, of course if that happens great but otherwise all of us should strive um like i am amdavad i am so we are not implementing reservation in a private sector uh, in a in a phd courses right uh, we were discussing few i am professors myself uh, few people from uh, i am etc were debating what to do and then we finally we we went and met myself dr suraj jengde and arun khobragade we went and met professor disuza uh, who was i am on the board director urged him to implement uh, he of course refused and we filed a case in in amdavad high court now that case is still going on the dr disuza has left and somebody else has come so we wrote to him again saying that there is a, such a case going on in uh, amdavad high court and uh, So I'm, uh, I am Ahmedabad is not implementing reservation. What do you think? He says, "Oh, thanks to pointing it, pointing it out, we'll make sure that that happens." And they file an affidavit that they will do it. Okay. The point I am trying to say is, few individuals determined can make a change. The court case costed us fifty thousand. The judiciary is not there to kind of give us a justice right away. You know, it's all Brahminical judges and so on. So, some of those things. few individuals like minded individuals 10 people coming together uh, contributing uh, 10000 50000 and we are well to do we a lot of us contributing that creating a small fund fighting a case in in the court and i am not saying that that justice they, they are just waiting to give you a justice but the pressure that i am amdabad case has put on rest of the iams rest of the iams fell in line there are 21 iams today and rest of the iams are now following there are struggles there are troubles all of that but 
that is how change comes about rather than looking for a masiha large organization bsp will take over everywhere and everything will be all right or vanchit will become a big one which they should by the way again i am not saying that they will not or they they are not but what why we have to wait you form a small group of like minded uh, people pick up a issue or a two or do something right later uh, we are supporting uh, faculty in iims who are struggling uh, to get justice they are getting discriminated we are writing to national scst commission we are uh, finally we wrote to president and president uh, instructed karnataka government to investigate that case and there is a police investigation going on against iim director as we speak so let us pick up the issue rather than waiting for some large thing to happen some masiha will come we are lucky to have dr ambedkar and we will we cannot wait for another dr ambedkar to come or as per, as big a person for like because it's a it's a it happens once in a it's a rarity right that is why he is great so we should strive to do small little things uh, inspired by him that's the way i see it uh, i i hope thank you so much beautiful beautiful thank, thank you uh, mr nilmakti sir for your valuable speech uh, you have focused on how caste plays a important role in corporate sector how caste comes in usa how caste enters in usa and is uh, paying back to the society is uh, most important and the best part i have uh, learned is the rational way to understand the religion that was the best part of your talk sir thank you very much i am uh, on behalf of the organizing committee uh, my co-host suyesh gautam and the most prominent swapnil sakre very much prompt activity he has done throughout the session thank you thank you very much all of you